Once upon a time, and yes, this is a true story, there was a man, his wife, and their son, which we're pretty sure he was six years old. One day, the man receives an important message. A passenger is on his way, and he needs help. But there's also somebody else who's after that man. The home of this family, of course, was a part of the Underground Railroad. And it was also a Quaker's home, which meant that the people who lived there never told a lie, no matter what the circumstance. The father, the father was about to go out, so he told his son, if thee meets anyone in need, Quakers talked like that back then, if thee meets anyone in need, tell them to go to that tree behind our property, and help will come to them. Six-year-old boy, okay father, doesn't think much about it, goes to play with his toys, then there's a knock at the door. His mother is cooking in the kitchen, so he goes to answer it. He finds that not only is this person look like they are in need, but they say so, and that they came to this house for help. Oh boy, must have thought the youngster, or whatever the 1800s equivalent is. Oh boy, father knew exactly what was going to happen, so I'm going to go take this man and do what my father said. So he takes the young man behind the house, behind the property, to that tree, sits him down, comes back to the house, and thinks nothing else of it. Father said that aid would come if somebody came and asked for it. The boy must have thought, or could have thought, we actually don't know what people thought back then because, well, we barely know what they said, let alone what they thought. Anyway, it was mealtime, and mother had prepared way too much food for herself and her youngster to finish. So she says to the young lad, if thou knows of anyone who is in need of food, thou may bring this to them, knowing who was at the door earlier, but not actually seeing them. I know of someone in need, must have thought the, uh, might have thought the boy, as he packs up a meal, and then he takes it down to the tree, he sits it down, and as the runaway slave tells him about all his travels and all his troubles and of his journey north. After a time, the boy's father returned home with good news. Would thee enjoy a trip to grandfather's home? The boy probably nodded with whatever the uh, extreme excitement nod is that six-year-old boys give sometimes, where they're like... Anyway. If thee happens to know of anyone who wants to come along, oh boy, must have thought the youngster, everything's turning out perfectly for my new friend as he goes to the tree and he says, hey, I know of someone who can give you a ride up further north. So the boy takes the runaway slave with his father up north to their grandfather's house, who happens to be the next stop on the Underground Railroad. Back at home, there's another knock at the door, but this time it's definitely not someone in need. It's a slave catcher. Now it's commonly known that Quakers are honest and will tell the truth no matter what. So the father is the first to be questioned. Did you meet anyone in the last week who was a runaway slave? The father's answer was, of course, no, I didn't. Now the mother, did you see anyone who was a runaway slave in the last week? Obviously her answer was also no. Now the boy's turn, or not the boy's turn. No slave trader would bother to ask a young six-year-old boy whether or not he saw a runaway slave. He probably wouldn't even be able to tell the difference. Plus, the young boy wasn't about to tell the slaveholder himself what was going on without anybody asking because he was quite shy. He had a speech impediment. So the plan worked perfectly. A family outwitted a slave catcher once again. If you want to catch up on our By the Decade series, you can click on this video here.